I asked you to send me your dumbest, stupidest wrestling ideas, and you guys did not hold back. You left over 1,000 comments, and I read through every single one. I picked out some of my favorites, and now... I'm gonna build them. Mary Zmizski has asked for a super long 3x3 piston door that's hundreds of blocks long. And for that, I'm gonna need to make a one wide tileable 3x3 piston door so I can keep stacking it as many times as I want. So for a one wide 3x3, we're gonna need one of these. But this isn't 100% tileable because this observer powers straight into this dropper. So if there's one next to it, it's going to affect this dropper as well. So I'm going to do something a bit weird. I'm going to move this dropper over to here and then I'm going to power it through this block so it won't interfere when it's next to it. And then I'm going to put a note block here to substitute for the hopper triggering the observer. And then this comparator should still detect the hopper through that note block. So it should close in theory and it should also open well, that was easy. So that's actually the hard part done already. I just have to add in the door frame and then do the pistons on the outside and make sure they don't interfere with each other. But I do kind of want them to be synchronized, otherwise this will look really bad when it opens. So if I put a block here, that closes the whole door and it also opens the whole thing. Now, if I want to put two of these right next to each other, I just have to stack them and replace these rails with powered rails. And I just realized the problem, these pistons are interfering with each other. So I'm gonna have to bring this further down. And now it's time to make this several hundred blocks long. I'm just gonna do slash stack 200. Um, be right back while I fix these rails. 2000 years later. That took way too long. Weld edit and rails really are like oil and water. This thing is so ridiculously long. It stretches way, way past my render distance. I am really scared to flip this lever. I really don't want to have to fix everything again, but I'm just going to go for it. Oh my god. And I can't even catch up with it. I have to fly to keep up with it. It just keeps going. It never ends. There's that much door behind me and there's still more to go. And we're finally at the end. I can't even see the beginning. It's just a void. And now I've got to test if it closes itself. So I'm just going to flip the lever and then run for my life. Ah! Uh, I appear to be stuck. I'm gonna have to go in spectator mode. Yeah, there's no outrunning this, but it seems to work. It also gave me a heart attack. Well, I'd call that a success. Mr. Lynx has asked for a staircase that knocks you down to the bottom before you reach the top. So anything to do with knocking the player back means that we're gonna be using slime blocks. So what I'm thinking is we pull down these stairs, then we push the next row of stairs up with slime blocks, and then we push it forward to shove the player back down the stairs. And when it's done, it hides itself away again. So first I've got this circuit that pulls the stairs down so they don't stick to the slime blocks when they push up. Then this messy part takes care of the double extender. And finally, this part just keeps pistons extended long enough so the trap can hide itself away again. So now it does this. And as much as I don't like them, I'm going to use a skulk sensor to trigger this thing, since it's kind of perfect for this. So let's try walking up the stairs. That actually worked way better than I thought it would. Well, there you have it. A staircase that you can't walk up. 96 stars has asked for a working phone. Well, here it is. It's got a screen, it's got a home button, it's got volume controls, it's got cameras, it's got everything you need. And it's really thin, just like phones in real life. It's not switched on at the moment, I have to come around here and press the power button. And I'll just give it a second, it's not quite as powerful as phones in real life, so uh, give it a moment. Oh my god. I was so stupid. Why did I think it was a good idea to make a Samsung? I could have made any other phone. I could have made an iPhone. I could have made a OnePlus, but it had to be a Samsung. Well, I'm sorry, 96 stars, but 
Your phone's kind of broken now. Volcanus has asked for an elevator that always takes you to a random floor. And for that, first we'll need an elevator. Here's one I made earlier. So to make this elevator take us to a random floor every time, we just have to get rid of this floor selector and replace it with a randomizer. And I think this is what I'll use for the randomizer. So this dropper has eight items in it. So when I press this button, it'll move one of the items into this hopper chain and each of these hoppers is set up to filter one of the items. And then will get filtered out by the hopper that has its color in it. It is a bit slow, and there are better ways of doing this, but it just has to work, and that's all that matters for this video. So I just have to find a way of squeezing this into the elevator. Two hours later. That took way longer than I'd like to admit, and I really don't want to even try explaining this. But now there is only one input. It should take us to a random floor every time. So this time it took us to the first floor, this time it took us to the 5th floor. And this time it took us to the 6th floor. So there we have an elevator that doesn't let you pick what floor you go to. Park has asked for a composter transportation tunnel, where you get into a composter, press a button, a trapdoor closes on your head, and it takes you somewhere else. I actually had this exact idea years ago, so I've already made it into a real thing. Although I made it when composters didn't exist, so it's got a cauldron instead. Taffy has asked for a street light that only turns on during the day and is off at night time. Hmm. XXX Krusty Toes Official Gaming Roblox XXX has asked for a 5x5 door that opens one block at a time, so you have to press the button 25 times to fully open it. I have completely bodged this. You might be wondering why the hell there's water in it. It's there because I'm using a bunch of droppers to pass a single item through the door to tell it which block to retract at which time. When I need the item to go down, I just let it fall, and when I need the item to go up, I'm using bubble columns. So here we go. I've got to press this button 25 times to open the door fully. One. There's the first block. Two. Three. Four. Five. And 25. Oh god, it's so bad. And then of course to close it again, you just press the button a 26th time. So when I press the button, that dropper down there is going to move the item all the way up that bubble column, go around here, drops it down there, and then... <laughs> the door finally closes. The AI has asked for a factory that produces both subscribe buttons and slimestone missiles to smash the subscribe button. You know, that is a good idea. You should subscribe.